Welcome to KJV Home Bible Study from the Man Cave. This is JC Ligar with the Ligarian family, Dunia, Chloe, and Brisa, and we're going to continue with the Gospel of Matthew. This will be part 173 through 175. But before I do anything, what do I need to do? Pray. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to study your word. I pray the Holy Spirit would fill me and enable me to teach it in a way that is clear and understandable and everybody can be blessed. I pray it in the name of Jesus and everybody said... Amen. All right. So we are in Matthew 24, verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves. Ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. What is really interesting about what Jesus is saying here, he's saying no one knows the day or the hour of his return. And people have been speculating for 2,000 years there was a book back in the 80s called 88 Reasons Why Jesus Will Return in 1988. That book came and that book went. And I'm pretty sure the guy took the money and ran because after 1989 came around and Jesus hadn't returned, he was nowhere to be found. Again, people were able to say, I look at the news, I look at everything going on in the world, and I feel Jesus is coming back very soon. And that's okay to feel that. I feel that too. But to actually set a date and say he is definitely coming back on this day, it makes Christianity look foolish. Because everybody will look at that and they go, Aha! When all along Jesus said, no man knows the day or the hour. But here's what we can see about what Jesus said. But as the days of Noe were, or Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noe entered into the ark. Bless you, hon. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So again, what was going on in the days of Noah was angels having sex with human women and having Nephilim. Now is Jesus saying that is what's going to happen again? speculation maybe but no what Jesus is really saying is look life is gonna go on as normal people are gonna be eating drinking they're gonna be getting married I just got married myself and life is gonna go normal but on a certain day he's gonna return and no one will be expecting it it'll be a normal day and boom when he comes the whole world will be different. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Is this talking about the rapture? Maybe. And some say no, it's talking about judgment, like the days of Noah when the flood came, that was speaking about judgment, and this is also. I don't know. So I'm thinking maybe it could be the rapture, maybe not. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord does come. 
But know this, that if the good men of the house had known what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. So it's not so hard if God were to call you to give up your life for the Lord, if you were to be martyred for God, that is easy. What is hard is living for God every day with the temptations in the world. And with, you know, again, some days you're going to have your highs, some days you're going to have your lows, you're going to question your faith. And again, living day after day, being faithful to God and living a life that is pleasing to Him. Some days, again, your old sin nature is stirred up and, you know, you're struggling with your old sin nature. But here, Jesus is saying, look, you don't want to be living as an unbeliever if you are a believer when I come back. You want to be excited about his return and not go, oh no, <laughs> You don't want to stand before him ashamed. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord has made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, a lot of people want to use that verse to say that they're going to get, or they're going to lose their salvation if they're not living a godly life, and if they backslide. That's one interpretation. I'll give you that. You could use those verses to make that argument. Or you could say this. If you're living a godly life, God will reward you. And you're going to have an abundant entrance into his kingdom. Or if he comes back and you're in a backslidden state... You're still going, but you will be ashamed at his coming. And when it comes to giving out rewards, you will get nothing. In 1 Corinthians 3, it speaks about our lives will be evaluated. Our foundation is Jesus Christ. And upon that foundation, we build gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. And... All our works will be tried by fire, whatever sort it is. And if our works, after they're burnt up, they remain. Like if you set gold, silver, and precious stone on fire, it, they get purified. But if you set wood, hay, and stubble on fire, you got a pile of ash. And again, when we stand before God, he will go over our works. And if our works are all burnt up because they were done in the flesh or we lived a life of a backslidden Christian and didn't really do anything for God while we were here on the earth, the only time we can earn rewards is right now. In heaven, there will be no soul winning. Everybody there is already there. They're saved. So the time to win souls is right now. And if you... Blow the opportunity that God gives you. 
once we're there, that's it. Whatever you have is what you have, and whatever you don't have is what you don't have. So again, this is to me an encouragement. Don't give up in the race. Only those who go to the finish line win the prize. So keep on serving God. And again, you don't want to receive the portion of a hypocrite. Because a hypocrite is somebody who puts on a mask and pretends to be a Christian. Do you think somebody who pretends to be a Christian is fooling God? God who looks at the heart? No. So he says, look, if you're going to live as an unbeliever, you're going to get the rewards of an unbeliever, which is nothing at all. So again, I just want to encourage you, be faithful, keep serving God. And again, you got dry spells, I get them too. But we don't give up in the race. We just go to God and say, Lord, pour your Holy Spirit into me. You know, get me out of my funk. Because right now, I'm not feeling it. You know, I feel dry. Let the water of the word quench your hollow, dry ground. This is J.C. Ligar with the Ligarian family. I hope this blessed you somehow, and we'll see you next time as we study the Gospel of Matthew. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.